just want to say, first of all, that I'm on a high LPR 35, so clearly my voice sounds better than it really sounds in real life. This always makes mine sound better right here. Yeah, of course. Well, of course, like Don, Don uh, Wilbank says, you know, I have a face for radio. Yeah. <laughs> I have a face for television, but I'm on the other side of the camera. Because yeah, I'm generally not on this side of the camera. Back side of the camera. But, All right. uh, so are, are we, we're on, right? Oh, okay. As they say in my business, are we rolling? But I don't think you guys roll. You're just streaming. So. I'm here with John Amadeo, NN6JA. Is that it right? is. And it pretty it. much that's good because everybody says my call letter is wrong, but that's right. <laughs> Long day, man. It's, it's been kind of tiring. It's been constant in a long weekend. I bet look, you've look, had look, a, look at a the, really long yeah. weekend. Look at the crowd back here. I'll the crew, I'll by the way, is so happy that this is coming to its conclusion right now. They're eating pizza. Some of them are drinking beer, which is really you know unheard of on a TV set, of course. But yeah, it was a very successful weekend, yeah. I think. So, so the, the propagation pretty good, I guess. You know, the propagation was okay. I was really nervous about it, as you know, propagation is what it is, and you can't affect it in any way. But uh, 10 meters did great today. Uh, not a stellar weekend, but really good. We think we may have had as many as maybe six. So we we won't know. Maybe six, maybe. 8,000 contacts today. Mm -hmm. Somebody said 10. I don't know if 10,000 contacts, but we had a lot of contacts today, all around the country. A couple of a uh, couple of DX contacts. So I, I, we're happy. We're pretty happy with it. I'll, I'll, I'll let you yeah. talk a little because I know I tend to go on too no, long. No, no, no. <laughs> hey, and, and you know we're um, we didn't have the highest uh, number of viewers we have like at a Dayton event, but we had a good number of viewers. We had a little over. 300, quite a bit steady right. across the day. This is a strange event. I mean, it's it's yeah. not like um, how do you what do you would you say about this event? You know, we're not an an A double R L thing. We're not a contest. Just yeah. and that draws a lot of people. We're not Dayton. It's a it's sort of a private uh, ham event. But I think we did okay. You know, I think we did okay today. We had a lot of uh, every station had contacts. And we, we worked from from uh, CW to D Star, so from the oldest digital format to the newest digital format. We worked 10 meters all the way to 40 meters, uh, pretty much everything in between, and had thousands of contacts. We streamed. You streamed all day long. Uh, Julian streamed on the Papa website a little bit of each individual station. So God, I hope we gave the uh, ham viewers something fun to do today. Well, I think it was a big event for ham radio. Uh, you know, it, like you said, it, it, so many different ways that they could take part in this uh, event. Yeah, I have to. I have to go back to all the operators and see. Uh, I'm not exactly sure how the echo link held up or the IRLPs, and I'll, I'll look into that as the the days you know progress, mm -hmm. so we can make this better if if we do it again. Um, but you know, the technology changes so quickly. We try to stay on top of it. Um, but I think we we're not embarrassed. We did pretty good today, and we're we're real proud of it. Well, let, let me step back a little bit toward the beginning. I should have said this is John Amadeo, mm -hmm. producer of the show Last Man Standing. So you are the producer. That's true. Yeah. And uh, um, this is an amazing place. Words is hard for me to describe it. I mean, with the sets and all the things going on, and all all your staff uh, have been wonderful to us, taking care of us. They've even uh, uh, taken part in uh, helping us with our webcast to get prizes away and. Uh, Man, it's been a, a, a really wonderful experience here. And I know uh, our viewers have enjoyed all the different interviews that we've had. They've had a lot of questions. Mm -hmm. And, you know, just the interview on the um, uh, ham radio in, in TV and uh, uh, movies yeah, TV or and it, film, it, TV yeah. and film, uh, that was, it turned out to be a very interesting conversation. Uh, a lot of people uh, comment on it, and we started naming all the different shows that yeah. uh, had uh, – had ham radio in it, and uh, a lot of the technical discussions and other things. It was just uh, it was good all the way around. I mean, TV and film has always used ham radio as a theme throughout history, really, throughout the history of, t of television and film. Um, it's not always kind to ham radio. I think that ham radio is a subculture, and it's often misunderstood. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I think a lot of people think uh, the ham radio operators are you know, lonely guys sitting in their basement uh, talking on the radio, but the fact is ham radio is a very powerful thing. Um, ham radio operators are very astute technicians and have invented some of the technologies that uh, the average person 
would never have an idea that uh, if you ha if you're holding a cell phone right now and talking to someone, that comes out of a ham radio technology. As a teenager, I had my handy talkie and I used auto patch, and people would go, "How are you making a telephone call on your walkie-talkie?" Oh, yeah. And you know, we had that a long time ago, and that sort of mutated into cellular telephone. So, uh, you know, you look into uh, television signals and facsimile and cellular telephone. Those are technologies that come from ham radio operators. A lot of the astronauts, as you well know, are ham radio operators. Um, it's, so it's a, it's a powerful technology. It's a community. Uh, it, it's a way people come together, but also it's a way to learn about the technology that we use every day and uh, the origin of those technologies. So it's, it's, a, it's a wonderful thing to learn as a kid and bring into your adulthood certainly worked for me because the things that I learned as a child through ham radio were able I was able to translate that knowledge into working on television shows and ultimately becoming a producer so um, I'm very grateful to the things that I learned from ham radio we uh, we presented the breaking news today with the yeah. VET mm -hmm. uh, that was uh, real interesting to a lot of people out there it stirred up a lot of uh, excitement I hope so yeah yeah that was a, a news that was three and a half years in the making. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, I'll, I'll tell you the backstory is the ham radio theme on Last Man Standing um, really started with a conversation that I had with Mr. Allen about his character and his character, Mike Baxter. Um, we know is is a man's man, and he's um, a hunter and fisher, camper, and. Um, he, as a character, but also as an individual, as a real person, really enjoys those technologies. Tim loves technology. And, in fact, he came to our show with his own radio equipment. He, he uses his own business band, UHF business band radios. Um, so it seemed like a natural um, progression for, for the ham radio aspect of the show to become a real thing for the show itself and for Mr. Allen himself. So he was the one that asked us to, to create a ham radio uh, theme for his character, which we did. You know, we, I still had my license, and luckily for us, we made some contacts in the ham radio community, notably ICOM, obviously. It's the ICOM equipment around the set a lot, um, and Comet antennas. I know that Mick was here today, and, and we were grateful to both Ray Novak at, at ICOM and Mick at, at Comet for some of the equipment we have. And that made it possible for us to portray an accurate and uh, hopefully positive portrayal of what ham radio could be for uh, most of the ham radio operators that watch our show. Um, and then Mr. Allen, you know, luckily for us, pursued it. It took a few years to, to, to get there. But, you know, he's a very, very busy guy. And ultimately, he, he, he wanted the license enough that we made it possible for him to take the test in a way that it's difficult for a celebrity to take a test and forget his ham radio license. You know, you have to understand that for a celebrity, um, we don't, you and I don't live so much, you probably more than I do live in the public's viewpoint, but for a big celebrity, there are a lot of people watching their movements, and um, we had to do it carefully, and, and we did. I think we did a, a pretty responsible job of helping Mr. Allen get his license in a way that wouldn't affect his personal well, life I, so badly. I would say, you know, out of a million people, maybe maybe two might mm -hmm. know who I am. You know, I, I don't know. I, I'm going to bet that you're wrong about that. I'm going to bet that you you are. I, I'm more than aware of you and and Kathy, and you're moving around the country, and you're 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 uh, you're streaming of these ham radio events. I think you have a lot of viewers, and I, I think your your webcast is pretty popular. And you know, I'll say the one thing about your your movement around the country, which is. It's very nice for us as ham radio operators, and especially for those ham radio operators that can't move that freely around the country for work reasons or financial reasons. You know, it's not like we don't necessarily want to go to Dayton, but we can't take time off from work or we may not have the, uh, the income to go to Dayton. But getting to ride along with you guys on your trip to Dayton, getting to see the celebrities of ham radio, and by that I, I mean more the manufacturers and the, and the hams themselves, we, it's, it's a really wonderful experience, and, uh, and we can watch the W5KUB stream, and we can ride along with you, and we can go to Dayton, and we can see the booths, and see the hams that are participating, and it's almost as if we've gone to Dayton with you, and participated in that event. So for the people that, I, I, I'll say thank you to, to both of you, for those of us that can't always go to these 
of these events, but that would like to, and that we get to ride along and at least get a sense of what that event is like. And I, I think it's a really positive thing. Thank you. I think it's a positive thing for the ham radio community to get to go to those events that we wouldn't normally get to see. I had never been to a Dayton, and I had seen your webcast before I'd ever went to Dayton, and I got to go, and uh, I found it really quite enjoyable. Yeah, a lot of people that said, you know, after seeing it, they want to come, and mm-hmm. they'll, they'll actually go to it, you know. Absolutely. Next year, if we did this again, well, hopefully we'll have uh, several hundred thousand people in the <laughs> in the stage so with us. Back to back to, to Tim Allen. Let's let's get back uh, okay. on point here. You know, he's a uh, like you say, he's very busy. He's a very highly known celebrity. Mm-hmm. You know, he's not going to be able to get on HF and call CQ very easily. I mean, this is going to be tough. Yeah, I think so. I th- I probably I I don't know. I'm going to work with him and see what I can, you know, what we can do. I mean, first of all, there's a lot of steps involved. Um, we have to determine what it is he he would like to accomplish with radio, and it may be a personal thing. He may, you know, like some of us just want to talk personally to our friends and to our relatives um, within radio. Some of us might want to go out more publicly and and just talk to the general public, uh, with the, the general hams out there. And I'm not quite sure what he'll want to do with it, but that'll be up to him. But of course, what's nice is that we have this this pretty broad support group of hams on the show, and uh, certainly we have more than enough technical expertise to execute whatever he might want to do. And uh, we'll just be there to to make that happen for him. Well, that's good. Uh, hopefully he'll uh, get active in some way, and we'll, uh, we'll I, I know it, it'll make a lot of people happy if they can if they can just make it that yeah. one contact with him. You know. Yeah, we'll, we'll try to make that happen. I think that the show is you know we do whatever we can. You know, the, the, I've said it many many times that the gear on the show, everything we have on the show is real. And when Tim said he's his character would be a ham, I mean that could very easily been. Um, a, a black box with a light and a meter in it, and really couldn't, we didn't have to go any further than that because that would have been just a prop, like mm-hmm. many things on TV shows are props, and they don't have to really work in any way. But because I had it in my background, I wanted it to all be real. So there's always going to be a real antenna on the roof. There's always going to be a real radio. And if you watch the show, while we're shooting the show, you'll see that there, the meter is live. Peep, somebody's talking on that radio in the background. Maybe it's maybe it's you. You know, you never know. Uh, there's almost always uh, an HF radio and there's almost always a D-Star radio in the background of the scenes that are shot in his office. And those radios are live. Well, you're doing something right because I, I'm sure you helped set up the radios in Tim's basement. And we did. Yes, I did. I did. And uh, let me tell you, that signal from Brazil, the Amazon, all the way back to, to Tim's basement, I mean, that was clear. You guys must have a, a super fine antenna out there. And well, we do. I know you had a, you had a nice sit down and, and chat with Mick at Comet, and yeah. you know uh, the, uh, it's very funny. We um, we put a, I put up these antennas over the last couple of weeks, and and it was you know fun to do as hams like to put up antennas and build things, and we did that. And then of course um, I dropped one of the antennas. And bent it into an unrecognizable yeah. shape, oh, and then Mr. Tim Holly, who's sitting off camera, thank you, mm-hmm. dropped the other one. We'd almost like well, you, you need took to him out. It. I mean, you know, if you bend one end, you got to bend the other end. So the, the SWR says things. So we've got two rather large. Um, they're H422 Comet antennas. They're they're pretty big and pretty heavy on on some uh, large uh, fiberglass masts, and they're it's like, kind of like reeling in a marlin. There, it's a big one-wheelie antenna. And um, so we pretty much banged up both those antennas, but they performed flawlessly today. As I said, we, we started at, uh, we started at uh, 10 and wound up on 40 meters, and they, they tracked right along. Very good SWR, excellent signal propagation. But uh, those poor antennas went through the mill today. Yeah. We'll see what happens. Hey, have you uh, done your little? Uh, I didn't. Yeah. I, um, I, one of my friends. Well, I, I come, of course, originally from Long Island, and all of my friends are. Or hopefully, my friends are on Long Island are watching. And uh, can you show the the bent antenna? Yeah. Yeah. yeah you and uh, you know, I come from a. My history on Long Island is um, started as a ham as a teenager, and um, my brother's a ham, and my friend Terry K2TRC is a ham, and she's 
hopefully watching this telecast. Who knows? And I'm a member of uh, a lot of radio clubs, the Papa System, of course, here in Southern California, and um, the Great South Bay Radio Club on Long Island, and some clubs in Florida, the Martin, Martin County, Martin County uh, Radio Club in, in Florida. So, you know, together, I've got a lot of radio clubs around the country. Yeah. So. Well, maybe uh, some of your friends were watching here. I'm sure. And uh, we, right. we had a lot of call-ins today from the Long Island clubs, on t- especially on D-Star. I think we just saw a picture of the of the, the antenna banged up antenna. The banged there. up antenna, yeah. yeah. They're they're pretty banged up, but you know what? They worked great. They didn't. They weren't damaged. They they worked great throughout the day, and they got us they got us all throughout the day. From I think we started on the air about seven seven thirty a.m. and we went yeah. all the way to three. And so did did you go up during the rain this morning? Yeah, I was on the on the stage roof this morning. The stage roof is covered in a rubber membrane which protects it from rain yeah. and the one thing I can tell you about it is that it is very slippery so I almost took a big spill oh. um, but I, I managed to, to save myself and luckily you know we got them all up there and I, they're at the absolute maximum height that we could put them at on these on these fiberglass masks which the fiberglass masks are great not to get into too much ham radio uh, antenna technology but because they're non-inductive so they don't really affect the antennas but the whole stage roof is covered with air conditioning ductwork and solar panels. So there is just so much interference up there. It's crazy. But we did manage to be able to tune those in. And Mick came up to the roof with me, took some great photos, and we were able to tune those antennas and get the SWR down. And I mean, it obviously worked because we made contacts all over the country with little effort today. Thank goodness. Yeah. Now, do you leave those antennas up high, or do you bring them down the lower? I'll be bringing them down the minute you and I put these mics down, and we're running up there and taking those antennas down. Because Are you taking them down, or just well, bringing I'm, them I'm lower, lowering them? Yeah, right? because I'm very, very nervous about it. In Southern California, we get the Santa Ana winds, mm-hmm. which can be, you know, 60 mile an hour winds, and I really, uh, the, the CBS, uh, you know, the, a lot of people are confused by this. We are a 20th century Fox television show. We air on ABC, and we shoot at CBS. Now, people uh, go, huh? And that's just the way it is. We're tenants here on the CBS lot, and they are extremely cooperative with us. They let us have the stage for the day, and they let me put six antennas on the roof of their stage. So in order to be responsible to them, we're going to run up there and lower those antennas because if something fell and broke one of their solar panels or any of their air conditioning ducts, I would would feel very responsible for that. So. Well, you know, hey, I would just like to say, too, your your staff has been wonderful. Yes. And, uh, I don't know where you find such great people, but. Yes. Well, this is, uh, yeah, you, you got you know, to meet Nicole and Billy and Nicole, Samantha Billy, and yeah. Andrew and, yeah. and Casey, and they're all people that work on the show with me. They're all hams. They all have their ham radio licenses. Um, I'm very grateful for all of them who have, uh, you know, come along on this journey of ham radio. Every one of them is extremely good at what they do. Um, all of them will go on to really, uh, I think, wonderful careers because they're very talented and they, they kind of know, they kind of get it. Um, it was really special for us to have you and Kathy here this week, and I think every one of us enjoyed it, hopefully as much as you guys enjoyed being here. We, we really enjoyed we it. We want you to, like, experience Hollywood. Yeah. You know, it's a, it's a tough town, Hollywood. It's, uh, I'm not sure what people around the country think about Los Angeles and Hollywood. It is not an easy place to live. But we wanted to make a fun, exciting event for our ham fans and for you guys, and uh, hopefully you enjoyed it too. Well, this was prob- this is probably the longest trip we've made to do any type of webcast. Mm-hmm. It's a couple thousand miles out here, and yeah. we uh, we let people know we're coming out here, and you know we're going to leave like at 7:30 in the morning and get here at 9:30. And mm-hmm. someone on the chat room asked if we were driving. <laughs> And uh, <laughs> very very fast car. Yeah. So so no, we, we we did fly out here, but we want to thank you personally, John, for our being the sole driver. I think for getting us out here, <clears throat> it was you that uh, was so gracious to to uh, help us come out here and be a part of this thing. And you've really shown us uh, everything and, and taken care of us like uh, we're we are royalty and <laughs> a really really. Well, you 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 know you couldn't be more welcome to be yeah. here, and it's it was our pleasure to have you here. I mean, when I started to um, when we, we, I spoke with the Papa System, who really uh, fronted this event, and also with especially John Bush and also um, Howard for the Bear System, 
we thought, um, what would be the smartest way to make this event something that was more accessible? You know, it's like the radio is is one avenue for way uh, for a way for people to to watch this event and enjoy the event. But but I mean, I was very much aware of your work, and I thought it would wouldn't it be amazing if we could have you guys come out and televise this event for the ham fans because. It's it's becomes suddenly an, immediately becomes an interactive thing. They could call us on the radio. They could go into your chat room. They could watch the video, and it be, it sort of completes the circle of uh, interaction with the ham radio fans. And it was really great. I'm so glad you could come out and you could make the time to come out. Well, we're loving it to death. We really appreciate it, and we actually we're extending and going to stay out here until Friday and see a little bit of the area. So Absolutely, it gave us an opportunity to. We normally don't take too many vacations. I, I just retired uh, last year from FedEx and uh, I traveled so much in the job, you know, mm-hmm. throughout South America, you know, Asia, Europe. Kathy would go with me on these trips and, you know, why take vacation when you're when you're always <laughs> going, you know, to these places? So we, we haven't gone anywhere for about a year or so and we want to just kind of make this a Use your uh, words, a mini vacation. Yeah, make yeah. it a vacation. Yeah. There's a lot to see here. I mean, Hollywood is an, is a very unusual place for the for the fans, for your viewers that haven't really been to Los Angeles. Los Angeles is an interesting town. Um, you know, Hollywood is is a particular thing. I I think that I, I would guess that most people don't know what to expect from coming to Hollywood. You're not going to really you're not going to see movie stars walking around Sunset Boulevard. But there are some very interesting things to see here, and I hope that you'll take the time and really, uh, you know, walk around, get, drive along Mulholland. I think you might have seen Mulholland a little bit. Mm-hmm. Hollywood sign, the Griffith Observatory. You'll get down to the the uh, Walk of Fame, and maybe you'll get out to Santa Monica or Malibu and see some of our beaches here. They're not as beautiful as the beaches on Long Island, but they're okay. All right. Hey, Kathy, have you got any questions that are starting to pop in or anything, or any, uh, any no, comments? Or? Uh huh. Well, thank you. Uh, they talked about how great your interview was that you did in the ARL. Oh, that was that was. You need to pick the mic up, Kathy, so people can hear you. Uh, Kathy's kind of uh, repeating some of the comments. Uh, in a lot of really good bars. equipment here. I did. I had a lot of fun in um, Connecticut. Um, my friend Terry, who's K2TRC, and Terry comes to. It's very funny. I introduced you guys. I to introduce you guys to my girlfriend Vicky. And mm-hmm. uh, most people know me as John, and they see, they get to meet Terry, who comes to all the ham radio things with me, which is a lot of fun. And I've got to know all of the ham radio people, you know, Ray from ICOM and Mick, who you guys know, and, and you and, and all the ham radio people. But um, rarely do I get to go with uh, with any friends other than, you know, with other than Terry, and maybe Terry's watching. Who knows? Okay, we have some questions on here. Sure. Um, they want to know how many of the staff and the crew are ham radio operators? Well, here's here's the way that worked. Um, we've been in production for now three, maybe three and a quarter years. And over the three and a quarter years, uh, 37 people associated with the show have gotten their licenses. But the way television works is that people come and go. So at the moment, I think there's about 20 people on the actual staff that have licenses. But, you know, people leave and go to other shows and come back, and, and, and we make new hams all the time. So right now on the staff, there's about 20. Over the course of three and a half years, there have been, 20, there have been 37 total hams made by Last Man Standing. Okay, there's uh, someone on here that wants to know if they can get a tour of the set. Well, yeah, there's a tour on the set on your video, which you're going to show again we have over several. and over again. We have so several if they just watch tours. the stream, yeah. they'll see that now Billy and Samantha have done an amazing video tour of the set, a very detailed video tour. And I believe you guys yesterday walked around the set from every single aspect of we, the set. We showed the whole set. In fact, you gave us permission to go into Absolutely. the police line you went here. Through the hot we, we, set went, line. we went behind the police line back there. And, uh, so if they uh, I hope if you screen. you know, I, I don't think I really touched anything, but if you watch the video, there may be a That's few true. times I picked up a magazine or I did something, but That's I, true. hopefully I'll put it back in the same place. So. Now, of course, it's Sunday yeah. late afternoon, and we are shooting a show here tomorrow morning at, uh, unfortunately, at 6 a.m. Oh. So in the background, which off camera, 
the staff is feverishly taking down all of the ham radio stuff and getting it out of here because the crew walks back in here at 6 o'clock in the morning and we have to shoot a show tomorrow. So the stage is sort of on loan to us and by tomorrow morning we'll be back in here with cameras and sound people and we'll be shooting a show. So, uh, And that's the uh, that'll be the uh, Halloween episode. So that'll air the week before Halloween. So, so really, you really, I don't think you give tours to people here. I mean, if they just come visiting, right? We uh, don't. I, I have to say that the ham radio operators that have come to see an episode of Last Man Standing have certainly gotten a little bit of special consideration. Uh, the average audience member books their tickets through um, showtickets.com. It's www.showtickets.com. And they can, anyone can book to come to Last Man Standing. We, we have a, you know, I've hear many, many times people go, we hate your fake laugh track. It's like, no, there's a, and you guys shot it yesterday. No fake laugh track. 200 people sit in the seats, watch the cast do the show, and laugh their heads off at it. That's not a fake laugh track. That's real people laughing at the real show. Um, and if you want to come to see the show and you're in Los Angeles, you just simply go on tvtickets.com and book the show. And you come and you'll be one of those people. Well, you'll be one of those it's fake free. people it's, laughing it's, in the show. It's free, right? And it is free. Yeah. It's absolutely free. Now, the ham radio fans, occasionally, if you know, they email us and they say, hey, I'm a ham radio operator and I'm coming into Los Angeles and I want to see your show. They do occasionally get special consideration. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they'll come down and get a little set tour. Okay. And once in a while, we've had some ARRL members come, and mm -hmm. they've gotten to actually sit at the Mike Baxter radio station. Oh, cool. And some have actually gotten to work stations from the Mike Baxter radio station. So that could happen. What, what do you got? Uh, what kind of ham radio equipment do you have at home? At home, I have, um, I have an ICOM uh, 7100 which is the uh, HFN radio station. Oh, cool. And some have actually gotten to work stations from the Mike Baxter radio station. So that could happen. What, what do you got? Uh, what kind of ham radio equipment do you have at home? At home I have, um, I have an ICOM uh, 7100, which is the uh, HFN D-Star radio. Um, I have uh, inherited a 40-foot crank-up tower with, that I put a... I've uh, seen pictures of that. Have you seen that yeah. tower? It's kind of funny. Um, I didn't want to be the guy in the neighborhood with the big tower, so it retracts completely behind my house. You don't even know I have an antenna. I hit a button, and it cranks up to 40 feet, and there's my antenna. Hey, did your neighbors know it was going in, or was this no, all they secret? Didn't, they didn't need to know, and they never okay. saw it until the first day I hit the button, and I raised it up to 30 or 40, uh, 34 feet. So you raise it up during daylight? Absolutely. I'll go on the radio. Per, I mean, I work a lot, unfortunately. Yeah. We have very long hours here. But on a Saturday or a Sunday morning, yeah. I'll some, I'll crank it up and I'll go on 10 meters in the morning sometimes, or I'll go on 20 or 40 meters in the late afternoon. Nobody has said to you, what is that thing? Yeah, they have said that. Uh -huh. I just say, well, that's my ham radio antenna, and they go, they go, huh? <laughs> you know, typically. Oh, and then I've got a, a few um, a few comet antennas on the roof for um, that I use for 70 centimeters and two meters. Um, but it's pretty low profile. I don't, nobody needs to. So I, I do operate. I've got uh, an ID51 handheld for D-Star, and I've got a Yaesu VX8, which I use for, actually use for the show, because it has very wide receive range, so I can actually hear um, the stage frequency. Now, interestingly, the show itself uses a UHF business band, because we're UHF business, and uh, our first ADs and our production assistants and our diff different departments use eight channels of UHF, for coordinating things on the show. So I will listen to that. And the fact is we're on the radio all day. From our offices, all of our employees are on handy talkies, on walkie talkies. And of course, it's Tim Holly, who I believe you interviewed a little earlier, who coordinates all of those frequencies. And then and you think about it, there are, that's true, I am I'm the BOJ, the voice of John. I have a beam on my bungalow that shoots my bungalow that shoots right at the stage so they can hear me very clearly and they kind of hear me booming in. But we have there are 23 stages on the CBS Studio Center lot and each one of those stages has a number of frequencies. So that's hundreds of frequencies all of which are coordinated by Tim Holly. Because it's just um, yeah, it's it's a very it's a very massive job to take care of that. Not to mention multiple video feeds and audio feeds and all that. So when we're I, I will oftentimes put my, my my ham radio in my pocket so I can listen to multiple frequencies at the same time, which you can't do on the business band radios. Right. So it's been really helpful for me to know that kind of stuff.
Hey, we have another question. Uh, they want to know how long does it take to shoot an entire episode? It takes about one week to shoot an entire episode of Last Man Standing. We, our actors see the script, generally speaking, on a Tuesday night, and that would be when we're shooting a particular show. In the morning, they come into what's called a table read, and they read that new script in front of the studio and the network, the writers, and the rest of the cast and the crew. Um, every day from that point forward, the cast will rehearse on stage with the director, and then the writers will listen to that rehearsal and will rewrite that script almost every night. So pretty much every morning we will come in with a, to a not entirely new script, but a rewritten script. Some things will change. Jokes will change. Story points will change. So we will rehearse on Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. And on Monday, we will pre-shoot things that have to be pre-shot, things that require special effects or stunts or, show or scenes that will not really be seen in front of the audience very clearly. And then on Tuesday, we will shoot our show in front of a 200-person live audience. Those people will laugh, not a fake laugh track. And then we will occasionally play back a few scenes that we pre-recorded. And then that will, of course, go into post-production process, which will take a week or two to edit. And then those things will air on a Friday night on ABC at 8 o'clock, um, having shot, you know, maybe sometimes two or three weeks before that. You know, I feel kind of like we're in a studio here live. I mean, we've never had an audience like this before. <laughs> Look at that. There's a massive audience Look at that. watching. Never had an audience right sitting, probably sitting out here watching before. Mostly yeah. young, attractive women. It's really strange. Yeah. But all on the front row, of course. Yeah. 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 I don't say about that. Yeah. All the ugly guys are back toward the back back here. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Casey, yes. yes. <laughs> okay, we had a question <coughs> earlier. Now that Tim Allen is a, actually a ham radio, a real mm -hmm. ham radio operator, do you plan to incorporate more ham radio into the show, Last Man Standing? That's a very good question. Do we plan to incorporate more ham radio into the show because Tim has his license? And, you know, the thing is this. It's the, the shows are written by a group of writers. We have, I think, at this point, we have something like 12 writers on the show. None of which are hams, probably. None of which are hams. Um, the ha the, we do not, we, the, pr the production team, does not dictate what the writers write. They can write whatever they want. Um, so, however, they do. They are influenced by what we put on the set. So, for example, the writers would probably never have written anything about ham radio until we created the ham radio station on the set. And then they saw it, and they kind of got to know a little bit about what ham radio was, and then they incorporated a little bit of ham radio into the show. Um, I don't believe that Tim will specifically influence the writers to write more about ham radio, but the writers are aware that Tim has his license, so it, it, in their consciousness they may decide to write something more about ham radio. But we don't try to influence the writers. They, they have to write stories that will introduce... You know, it, the show has to appeal to the general public. Now, our viewership is about 6.5 million people, there's about 750,000 hams in the United States, which is you know, roughly 10% of our viewing audience. If every ham watched this show, which I don't think they do, it would be 10% of our viewing audience. Um, so it's really important for our writers to write to the masses. You know, we have 6.5 million. We'd like more. You know, please, uh, if, if all 750 million uh, thousand hams could watch this show, we'd have a 10% increase in viewership, and that would be great. So we'd love for more hams to watch the show. Um, whether or not that would translate into more ham radio content on the show, I can't really say. But, you know, keeping the ham radio theme in the forefront of the consciousness of the writers, that's great. You know, the more of that we do, the more of that we might get on the show. Now, we have a web uh, Facebook page that's dedicated to ham radio, and that's the KA0XTT Facebook. But that's watched by mostly hams. Like, the writers don't really see that, that very much. However, there is an ABC, there is, a, there is a Last Man Standing Facebook page sponsored by ABC Television. And occasionally, the writers will note to me that they've, the hams have gone on that page and asked for more ham radio content. That's really more the effective way. Go on the ABC page and say, more ham radio. 
if you if you go on the K zero X C D page and say more ham radio, well you're preaching to the choir. Hey, you're talking to hams. We already like ham radio. You so kind of have to go on the ABC page. So who is really in the background? Who is really K A zero X T T? Oh, you know, I think that's all of us. I think it's all of the all ham radio you? operators that that work on this show. And there's now that you know actively. You know, at least 20 people that have hammers. We all go on there and blog and post pictures and comment about it. Yeah. But it, it's the writers that would need to address it. We don't write the show, we just produce it. Can you tell us exactly what a producer does? No, it's impossible to explain that. <laughs> There are many different kinds of producers, so it's very hard to say. If you watch our credits, you're going to see just a, a cascade of producing credits. Many of the producers you see are actually writers with producing credits. Um, my producer title has to do with the actual physical. Pr my credit is generally the produced by credit. Um, because I'm in the Third, fourth season, I get a co-executive producer credit, but what I do is actually physical production. Cameras, lights, sound, hiring people, making sure things happen when they need to happen, on the budget they need to happen on. Um, but you will see so many different producing credits on any show or movie, and they change from the producing credit on a half-hour multi-camera sitcom versus the producing camera on a movie, completely different things. So it's very hard to quantify what a producer does. In my case, it has to do with physical production, scheduling, budgeting, hiring, firing, making sure things happen when they need to happen, on the budget they need to happen. Um, that's kind of what I do. But there are people that write that are called producers. There are people that consult that are called producers. There are people that uh, help the show out in other sort of almost unquantifiable ways that are producers. It's a, it's a pretty difficult title to explain. <laughs> Sorry about that. All right. Any more? All right. We got a photo coming up here. Oh, we got a photo up. <laughs> but I really, I, I just appreciate that your viewers today and the really good questions that they asked, and the interplay between all of our various uh, crew. Um, our crew is just wonderful, and they they're the ones that make this happen. I mean, you know, as a producer, you can plan for things, and you can you can ask for things to happen, but you don't physically execute it. And when we do a very big episode, like we have an episode coming up, the episode that you guys walked around our set, which is our Halloween episode. And the viewers will notice that half of the sets are gone. This little corner is usually part of the retail space of Outdoor Man. But right now in the retail space is an entire school. There's a whole high school over there. Well, somebody has to take those sets down and put new sets up and paint them and light them and, and you know, and and the people that run out and put the props into the hands of the actors and the set decoration, all every little picture that you see, someone has to put that on the wall. That's the crew. That's the 150. And they do that every single week. And we change things at the drop of a hat. The writer will write a new scene, and everything around you has to change to accommodate that new scene. And our crew does that flawlessly every week. And, of course, it's my staff in our production office that helps execute those changes and those things from a week-to-week -week basis. And they're really good at what they do. So, you know, what, if you see a new setup, it's like we didn't actually build that set or paint that set, but our crew did, and they did a great job doing it. So they're, they're the heroes really here. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. We have another question. What software do you use for editing, Avid, Final Cut, Premiere Pro? It's Avid. Um, most professional television shows use Avid. And, uh, of course, we have a, a fairly large editorial staff. The editorial staff is headed by uh, an associate producer, which is a post-production title. And then we have an editor and an assistant editor and a couple of post-production PAs and stuff. Um, when we do stuff on the show, for example, if you watched uh, on, your, uh, on your webcast, there was a tour of our set that was produced by by Samantha and Billy, and that was actually done on Final Cut Pro. But for the show itself, we use Avid. And it's a very stable program, and it's really a, a tried and true uh, professional editing software system. So, so good. all the questions you got good. here. Well, and hey, I really appreciate you. The, these guys built a set for us. I mean, this this corner here was what blank, I guess. This was right? a blank, a little little empty space here. So, what would it cost for us to take this with us? I mean. Oh, we'll have to talk about that off camera, yeah. probably. Well, 
Yeah. I mean, I can afford it, but I, I maybe I can go on eBay and buy some fish you can, like you like can the fish. Put right this here. on your private jet as you fly back yeah. home. Yeah, I know you guys yeah. come. You came in a seven twenty seven, I believe. Yeah, seven thirty seven. Seven thirty seven. I'm so yeah. sorry to yeah. say that. Yeah. Well, you know, it's we had the walls, and we basically just moved them over and we we set it up. And now, are things already hanging on the wall when you move it, or do you have to actually no, hang no, on the wall? There's a there's a person whose job it is to take everything down, uh-huh. so it's all safely taken care of and. Put it in a box, and then they somebody else moves the walls, puts them up. Somebody touches up the paint in case we chipped it. Someone else puts up the fish back on the wall. Somebody lights it professionally. Yeah. So it is it is quite an army of people. And then, uh, quite frankly, from a union standpoint, as I think you experienced a little bit, there's someone that moves the chairs in, someone that wheels in the the blue background, and someone that hands you a microphone. Now, of course, yeah. this is not quite that, but on on the show, it's very unionized, and there is uh, there's one person that does each individual job, and it's sort of necessary because there's a lot of work here, and for it to happen as quickly as it does happen, you need one individual professional or or a team to do each thing. But you know, it happens every week. We will change the entire set over from week to week, and it happens flawlessly week after week. It's hard to do. Okay, just one more question here. Mm-hmm. Uh, is it common for competing networks to share resources with each other? No. <laughs> it is not common for competing networks to share resources, um, which which is, um, if you notice, like you'll watch a talk show and uh, someone will be interviewed and say, well, I'm on a new show on another network. And they won't even name the, ne- the name of the network. And it, what's interesting about Last Man Standing, I think I said this already, is that we are a Fox, we are a 20th Century Fox television show. We air on ABC, and we shoot at CBS Studio Center here in Studio City, California. And uh, that's just the way it is. T- uh, 20th Century Fox produces the show. They sold it to air on ABC. And we are a tenant here at CBS, and we rent this space. It's a, it's a really wonderful studio. Uh, one of the best studio facilities in Los Angeles. I know that Tim Holly's talked a little bit about the history of CBS Radford, but boy, there's it's just an, an endless history of wonderful TV shows that have come out of this facility, and we're really proud to be here. And of course, this is the Seinfeld stage, so there's just great karma and great vibes about being on this stage. You almost feel the energy, and that how can our show not be successful to be on this stage? That's had so many really great hits. Well, John, thank you very much. I know you you've got a lot to do. You got to tear down. You got to be back <laughs> to work do. tomorrow. You got to clean this place up. We really appreciate you bringing us out here for the show. It's my pleasure. We've got a few more prizes. Maybe we can get oh, Sam maybe, maybe we can get Sam or, to, uh, or Nicole to get a few more prizes about. away. Are they? Is that, okay. is that bad? The Niners? Are oh, oh, I see the 49ers. The 49ers. Uh, oh, yes, oh, big okay. 49ers fan. Okay, well, go us. Maybe Sam, you gonna help yeah. us? Yeah. Okay, well, I want to thank you so much for coming out here. It was our pleasure to have you, and we we hope you'll come back. All right, thank you. Thank you. I'm not leaving. I'm going to start folding up tables.